All right, yo, here is another update. <laughs> I was supposed to have done this update, what, probably about two weeks ago, but then I ended up getting COVID. And ever since then, I kind of been, you know, just kind of out of it. I, I finally got better, you know, but I just hadn't really been in the mood to do any, I guess, writing or creating. But, you know, some, some things happened recently to kind of put me in a better mood, better spirit. So now I'm back to writing and reading and everything else. Um, well, I'm not back to really writing stories, but I'm back to coming up with ideas. But anyway. <clears throat> Let me uh get to my main point. All right. Now, the first thing I was supposed to have been talking about, well, really, I wanted to go uh, into this thing with the character info categories. Now, you know, whenever I'm working on my characters, I always have this ready to, you know, to do. And I often go with a large number of faculty uh sets just in case um but a lot of times i end up not filling up that whole thing i probably stop around quintery or sextory or something like that um but anyway i've created some other you know uh things like well the sharpened faculties i created that a while back <clears throat> but i just really decided to go ahead and put it in here um if, I don't know if I had explained it before, but sharpened faculties are pretty much just regular faculties and talents and skills that a person has, uh, I guess you say, upgraded, improved through their, through their own, you know, like working out, stuff like that. You know, like a person constantly going out and running, you know, to help increase their speed, you know, doing things to make themselves more flexible. Um, this is pretty much just, you know, just average conditioning you know that, that can bring a person to like olympic levels of um you know strength and stuff like that and so <clears throat> some people who are you know a per, uh that have sharpened uh faculties are uh Chantrice, although now she has um augmented she has augmented fa uh faculties after taking the blood loss serum but that's a whole nother story um like i said chantrice uh there's even heed um character i just created named favalox which was really originally called phantom fox but after seeing that there's like a dj or something with that name and that it was also a name from beyblade i decided not to use it but I really liked that name, though, when I first came up with it. Phantom Fox. I, I, I just was really into it. I was trying to come up with a name that sounded like an old, you know, like, Golden Age superhero. And I thought Phantom Fox would actually be, like, a fucking cool name. But, I mean, Favalox still sounds like something old. So, <laughs> you know, I'm sticking with that. And for the record, Favalox is a combination of Phantom and Velox. Or Velox, how you pronounce it. It's, it's uh, Latin. But it pretty much means like swift, quick, you know, stuff like that. That's what it means. So the name would technically be like Phantom Quick or, you know, if I turned it around the other way, Swift Phantom or something like that. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, Favalox is, is the name of that character. Uh, now, let's see, we have otherworldly faculties. These are people who have powers that are based in either being, you know, possessed by a spirit um given powers by you know like an alien or something like impervious would technically be a person that has um otherworldly abilities but i still classified him as e faculties because he got his powers on the night of the benevolent eclipse it's the same thing with upshift his powers technically would be otherworldly faculties but I, like I said, have them classified as E faculties simply because he got his powers the same way. But he also got them from an alien, but he was only able to receive the powers or they were only able to work with him because he had a laden uh, E gene. So that's that's another thing. Uh, cosmodry faculties, those are pretty much the powers of the gods, the, the main gods, you know, like... um. Like, like the almighty and then all of his brothers that I created. 
I have to go back into that one, uh, go back into background on those characters another time. Then there's divine faculties. Now, that is also powers that are connected to like gods or demigods and stuff like that. Like, like I have my own version of Thor. And so he has what you would consider divine faculties. But I call them something else uh, within the universe I, I, as far as Thor goes. Mainly because I was using actual Norse mythology. Um, I wanted to do differently than what, you know, Marvel did. I wanted to try to base it a whole lot more in, in the actual mythology and try to, you know, keep Thor close to his original appearance, you know, and everything. Now, I, I, I you know, I made, made a few adjustments as far as using um, the hammer goes. I can't remember how to pronounce the name right now, but, um, <clears throat> you know, there, there's that. <laughs> so let me get back to okay the other thing i was supposed to be talking about all right superhero factions now i believe i had discussed the superhero factions before but um you know of course i have the safeguards there's the senior squad then i have the codes of conviction which is kenneth evans uh aka deliverance his little uh i guess you say what, what would i call it well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a superhero team, too, but it's something else I'm trying to think of. <laughs> it's really a family thing, because it's him and his two daughters. Um, I'm still trying to think of other names to call them, because, you know, uh, Carla, her name is Liberation right now, and Starla's name is Equity. And I really want to give her a different name, since I'm using Equity elsewhere. Um, like, originally, Carla was Lady of Freedom. And Starla was actually Providence, but I realized that didn't really make sense as far as the name went. At least I couldn't think of a reason to really call her that. And so then I came up with the name Loyal Star, but that didn't sound right either. So that's when I came up with Equity. Um, I wanted their names to kind of all tie into the group name, you know, the Codes of Conviction. Um, now, obviously, Deliverance isn't necessarily a code. <laughs> But it's something that a person works towards. And that is what Kenneth has been working towards most of his life. Deliverance. You know. But um, I guess you could say liberation and equity would be codes. I don't know. I guess liberation would still fall into more of a goal than a code. But um, liberty itself could be a code. But I didn't really want to call her liberty. Since that name has been used so much. And I felt like I would have, have had to make that name a whole lot more different if I was to, uh, you know, try to continue using it. Because um, I believe if not DC, Marvel has copyright on a character named Liberty. I have to look and see again. Um, <clears throat> but that's that's the other thing. I keep trying to find names that don't cross into too much of a... Uh, you know copyright territory because i do notice that there are lots of different comic uh book companies that have characters with similar names simply because i believe these names are not you know since these names come from words that are in a dictionary it's hard to really copyright them like you could copyright it as you know like if i had liberty then had her real name and i could copyright that but i can't just copyright the name liberty uh, because that's used for a lot of different things. But at the same time, I just don't want to have a name that's too similar. You know. So, liberation it is. <laughs> for right now. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm still toying around as far as those characters go. That's the reason why I haven't really introduced them yet. Because I don't know if I'm going to stick with these names or not. Like, the real names I'm sticking with. But... The alter egos of the code names. Yeah, I'm, I'm still debating on those. All right, remnants of Go. Now, Go Man was actually something I created back when I was in uh, high school. And it actually didn't have anything to do with the visual verse. It was its own thing. But I, <clears throat> I had been working with different, you know, superheroes that I came up with. And so, 
considering the ideas I had for Go Man, I didn't really want to let that hero go. <laughs> you know, pun intended. So I decided to fold, you know, everything I came up with into the vigil verse. You know, just just, you know, add it into that. And so the Go Man, you know, as far as the visual verse is concerned, the Go Man are a team of superheroes that was, you know, sponsored uh, by the government. You know, they, they paid for, you know, all of their uh, outfits, all of their different stuff. And so, like, as far as the Go Man goes, it's like a combination of, uh, what can I say? It's like the Power Rangers combined with G.I. Joe and... That was another team I thought of, but <laughs> uh, the Go Men existed and they wore different colors. Like the main leader, the original leader, Go Man One, because see that there have been different Go Men, and originally the Go the Go Men were were not exactly a team. Like I mean, I got it right here. Um, I got the remnants of Go are a team of genetically enhanced soldiers whom were once employed by the government until Conrad G. Dunst won the presidential election and cut off their funding during his first year in office because he saw them as a waste of taxpayers' money. Embittered and feeling forsaken by the country, they'd risked their lives for time and time again. They changed themselves into a gang of mercenaries for hire and began to take on various suicide missions to keep the bills paid. The more dangerous the mission, the higher and more extravagant the payout they demanded. This led to them being nicknamed the Billion Dollar Squadron. In addition to being mercenaries, a few of the members took on the role of vigilante superheroes in their hometowns and ceased using the name Go Man as a designation. Currently, the team is devising a plan to get Dunst out of office and secure their place back with the government. Now, that that is the background that I came up with when I was, you know, reworking, rebooting, you know, th this character or these characters. Because originally there were only supposed to be two Go Men. <laughs> it was really, really just supposed to be like the the Junior, uh, the son, which Andre Nally Junior. And, and originally Go Man was white when I first made Go Man. It was a white guy. Um, and then I decided I wanted to make him black. And so when I was drawing it in high school, after coloring his skin with the ink pen that I use for, you know, white skin, I colored over it with this bronze ink pen I had, which is the one I use for, you know, brown skin. And so it looked a little funny when you go back and look at the old drawing. But, um, and Go Man back then was also drawn in, in kind of like a typical superhero style. Not in the way that I'm envisioning uh, him being now. But the main thing with the Go Man is that, like I said, as I put here, they were genetically enhanced soldiers. And this is based on, you know, experimentation done on their body, as well as a uh, serum that they were given. Like, I actually have it right here as far as the powers and abilities go. <clears throat> it said, two members of Go have abilities and superpowers separate from the rest after the becoming. These two are, I don't even really remember how to pronounce this damn name. Name the character and can't say the name. <laughs> uh, I want to say it's Pacjo or Paco. I don't know. Uh, but Ar Argento and, and the Jade Fury. However, when they both were a part of the original incarnation of the Go Men, they wore color-coded Go Wear outfits which provided them with enhanced durability, agility, strength, and stamina by injecting their hearts with a substance called Adrosia 6. A shot of this substance would last for four hours, after which they collapsed from the strain of working every vital organ and muscle in their body so hard. A few of the members became addicted to the substance, stealing batches of it and taking more than the required dosage. One member in particular, Major Adrenal, had consumed so much Adrosia 6 that his body began to secrete it. Since it's not necessarily a vital fluid for the human body's survival, the other members could drain it from him as needed and stockpile it, you know, like plasma. Major Adrenal has an unlimited supply of Adrosia 6 coursing through his veins, so he can tap into increased abilities more 
frequently than other members. This unlimited supply came in handy when the team was cut off from the government in the lab where the substance is manufactured. At the present time, they're aiming to get their hands on a new Adrosia 9, which is rumored to endow abilities such as flight, superhuman speed, x-ray vision, and superhuman hearing, just to name a few. Now, I'm still working on that stuff right there. That is what I came up with at the time, you know, and so I will most likely go back and redo a lot of that. Um, but, you know, Go is, is an idea. It's, it's a series I want to do, but I know it's not one of those series I could do as a series of books. That was the thing I originally envisioned. But a lot of these superhero teams I've came up with in these series I've come up with that I have, you know, written, uh, you know, uh, listed and everything. A lot of them are going to have to be comic books or something like that or like a graphic novel. So uh, whenever I get a chance to and I get the money, I'm going to have to, you know, get up with some people and get them to, you know, to do this for me. Like I'll do the writing. They can do the art, you know, and all of that. Um, but I definitely want, you know, the, the series to be, you know, brought to life. That's the one thing I do want. Let me see. How long have I been talking? Shit, almost 16 minutes. All right. Let me get to the other point. Uh, let's see. There's the Gold Web Network, which I still haven't, you know, really gone back to working on them. But that's, that's, uh, oh, <clears throat> my bad. <laughs> that's a team that Leroy uh, Upshift is part of. And it's it's really a team of hackers, but um, that's all I really that's all the information I actually have on them because I haven't you know gone back to working on the Upshift Chronicles in a while, and that's another thing that's probably gonna have to be a comic book instead of a instead of novels. It, it all depends because some stuff, the way I want to write it, or the way I am writing it, it doesn't come out right as far as a book goes. You know, like, I really realized that comic book characters do make more sense in the comic book medium. Like, I have a lot of novels that are based around or off of comic book characters or, you know, popular storylines. But it it doesn't hit the same way as it does when you're looking at the artwork. <laughs> like, some novels are pretty good, but um, still not the same. Okay, the Fanciful Force... I believe I've explained about them before, but this is like my version of the Fantastic Four, although it's actually five of them. There's on uh, Full Scale, Fade Away, uh, The Incredible Spectra, Dread Flame, and The Fanciful One. Now, uh, as you can see, The Fanciful One is the child of Grady and Diamond. Uh, that's, that, that's their son. Now, The Fanciful Force has been around for years. Uh, but again, like I said, you know, all of these superhero teams and characters I'm coming up with, even though I'm establishing that they've been around for a long time, these are characters that I've just recently created, but they're being kind of like retroactively, uh, I guess you could say, um, added to the universe. And so, you know, you have the fanciful force, you have remnants of Go. You have, um, well, the All-Star Misadventures is a very new team. Uh, the Clan is also a new team or a possible team. I haven't done that one yet. But you have the, uh, recently, this is the main one I've been talking about. The Equity Syndicate of American Superheroes, which is also just known as the Equity Syndicate. I know that's a mouthful for a group name, but it was my way of kind of trying to make something that was similar to the Justice Society and and the justice league you know and so equity syndicate sounded the best you know but i really wanted it to be a long ass name and so that's why it ended up being the equity syndicate of american superheroes because there's going to be an equity syndicate you know in other countries <clears throat> damn in other countries as well <laughs> so right now yeah this is the equity syndicate of american superheroes but there will be an equity syndicate of asian superheroes and you know, uh, European superheroes, so on and so forth. Um, my my actual next idea is to make an equity syndicate of African superheroes, you know, or at least base it on a country in Africa. But I really want it to be the whole continent. That's what I really want it to be. So it's like the equity syndicate of African superheroes. 
And then that way I can have heroes from different, you know, parts of Africa. Like I could have, I could still have like an equity syndicate that has a base in Kenya or one in Nigeria or, you know, um, I'm, I'm forgetting right now, but <laughs> you get the picture. Yeah, I get the picture. But anyway, right here, the equity syndicate, like I said, is my version of the Justice League. But I still don't have all of the heroes that I mean to make for it. So I'm going to explain who everybody is right now. Like I, right, Nicholas uh, Latimer, a.k.a. Sun Call. That's like my version of Clark Kent, you know, Superman, but he's black and he's from a pl uh, <clears throat> he's from a planet called Sun Cola. And uh, he's a Sun Calarian. Now, originally, Sun Call was not supposed to be from another planet. What it was is that there was supposed to be an alien from another planet that came here and possessed Nicholas. But I decided to toss that away. I wanted him to actually be an, an alien. But he didn't grow up on Earth. That's the thing with Nicholas. He didn't grow up on Earth. What happened with Nicholas is that he grew up on, on his home planet. But but um, there ended up kind of being like this... Uh, tyrannical society that rose up out of nowhere and decided to try to subjugate everybody on the planet and anybody who fought back against them they were banished from the planet like the rulers decided that instead of killing these people and making them martyrs they just wanted to get rid of them and sent them different places and nicholas just so happened to have been you know banished from his planet and sent to earth like he was put inside of a pod that just had a random destination and Earth was the destination that was chosen. So like unlike with Clark and Krypton and Krypton being destroyed, uh, Nicholas's planet is not destroyed. Now, I don't have an alien name for him right now, but Nicholas is the name that he chose to call himself once he came to Earth. Um, and he was living inside of a lighthouse. Uh, with some people, you know, and they said that he was, you know, their child. Um, but that it's it's a it's a whole lot that goes to it. <laughs> like I said, it's supposed to mirror the whole Superman story, but drastically changed and like dealing with a black guy. That's the main thing. You know, it's like black Superman, but his powers are a lot more fire based and solar based than they are anything else. Now, we have Benjamin Douglas Womack, a.k.a. Favalox, which was originally called Phantom Fox. Uh, Benjamin Womack is my version of Bruce Wayne. He's also a black man. <laughs> uh, and, you know, most of these heroes here existed, you know, they, they fought crime during like the 30s and... Well, the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and some of them in the 50s. Most of these heroes are, are very, very old, but their aging has been slowed down. Like, um, Nicholas, due to him being an alien, uh, his aging halted once he entered Earth's uh, atmosphere. Now, if he was still on his planet, he would be pretty old. <laughs> like, because, like, technically, Nicholas is, I think, 114 years old uh, at this point. But he doesn't look it. He looks like he's in his mid forties. Um, Benjamin, uh, he's he's from Earth, but as I have you know listed here in the brief backstory, uh, Favalox disappeared in 1948, and what happened is that he was going, to, uh, he was pursuing one of his uh, foes, which I don't have a name for the villain yet, but he was pursuing one of his foes and. They used a device that trapped him outside of time, you know, or kind of trapped him inside of a, a, a time like dimension that slowed his aging down or really froze his aging, actually. And he was trapped there for at least four decades, uh, four or five decades. I, I, I got to go back and check. <laughs> but, you know, so he is still in his uh, mid 30s, you know. But he would be a lot older now. <clears throat> uh, Nor, I think that's how you pronounce her name. War Queen is like my version of Wonder Woman. 
Um, and she's from America, but her family is actually from a. Well, she's not really from America. She's from another country, but her family moved here during a specific war. It's a, it's a fictional war that I came up with. And she ended up growing up here in America, though. And she found out later that she's not exactly human. You know, she has these divine abilities. And like I said, I'm, I'm still working on that character, so I can't tell you too much about her. But um, that's just part of the background on her. And of course, I have already explained to people about Kenneth Evans' uh, deliverance. Um, you know, so him, uh, Favalox, War Queen, and Sun Call, all four of them came together to form the Equity Syndicate. Now, there are other members that joined much later, like Evenheed, which is like my version of Green Arrow. Uh, Augustus Abraham Bayard, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this last name, I forgot already. I want to say it's Madeque, I guess. <laughs> but his name was originally Orange Hurricane, and I realized that was too on the nose because he's supposed to be like my version of Red Tornado. So I decided to call him Supercell Topaz. I might take the Topaz part off, though. Uh, then there's Echo Marshawn Jeffries, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Stellar, which is my version of Mr. Terrific. That's, that's what it is. Still a black guy. But he's more of a Christian than, than Mr. Terrific is. Now, of course, in DC Comics, there is a version of uh, Mr. Terrific that is a Christian uh, on an alternate Earth. He ended up becoming a priest, actually. But, um, yeah, you know, so to read this little brief backstory, I said the Equity Syndicate of American Superheroes was founded during the mid 20th century by the extraterrestrial superhero slash expatriate Sun Call and three other superheroes, Favalox, War Queen and Deliverance. This powerhouse of heroes were forced to come together upon learning that their deadliest foes had teamed up to accomplish universal universal domination. I cannot talk. <laughs> this alliance of supervillainy was not only a threat to the entire universe, but reality is they knew it. After defeating the villains and preventing multiversal destruction, Favalox purchased a building in a yet-to-be-developed district of Northside Aves Bay and founded the ESOAS headquarters. Afterwards, the team promised only to come together when the universe was in danger and went their separate ways, pretty much sinking into obscurity until Favalox's disappearance in 1948. Now, that's all I have written as far as that goes right there. But um, the Equity Syndicate would be like America's original superhero team, way before the Go Men, way before the Safeguards. And the Safeguards was really only a team started in Aves. Now, the Equity Syndicate was started in Aves also, but it was meant to be a nationwide type of superhero thing. Their headquarters was just in, in Aves, but it was meant to be a nationwide thing. So, like, once I really get to working on more heroes, like, you know, modern and classic heroes, I will, you know, explain and, and elaborate how there are heroes from other places like Michigan, wherever else that are also part of the uh, Equity Syndicate of America. Um, <clears throat> now, I have a team called the Out Thares, which is really supposed to be a team full of galactic heroes, you know, extraterrestrial heroes, or people with powers that stem from extraterrestrial uh, beings. Uh, that's what that team is supposed to be. Right now, I don't have the team leader, but the team leader is supposed to be somebody similar to Martian Manhunter. Uh, the Yesteryears is another team that consists of all of the old heroes I just got through talking about, like Sun Call, uh, Favalox, uh, War Queen, Deliverance. Uh, there's a character named Vesper Noir. Uh, she's part of it. And there's a character called A Passion. Like all of the characters that I came up with, there was supposed to be like Golden Age and Silver Age heroes at the time when I first was putting putting becoming together before i decided to call it the vigil verse i had a lot of you know like i said golden age and silver age type heroes and the passion was one of those <laughs> you know that was actually going to be the leader of this um the, of this group but i think i'm gonna have vesper uh be the leader this time <clears throat> you know but um 
I, I'll be back to working on that team a little later. Uh, Goddamn. And I almost talked 30 minutes. All right. I'm going to stop this thing because I know it's going to cut me off. And I will make another video um, in a couple days or two weeks from now. <laughs> it all depends on what happens. But uh, I just wanted to kind of give an update on all of that stuff. And uh, that's it. I'm out.